My name is Kazuya Saito. I'm associate professor at University College London Institute of Education. In this video, I'm going to talk about introduction to second language research, especially focusing on my own projects. Let me introduce a little bit more about myself. I used to teach English at the Waseda University, Tokyo, Japan. But in 2015, I decided to move to the UK. And since then, I have been working as a professor at University of London. I teach second language equation as well as TESOL, and I, and I supervise MA and PhD students. At the very same time, I'm interested in the development of ESL, EFL, teaching learning materials and textbooks. And uh, I am a late second language user of English. So all the way up to undergraduate, I had been in Japan without any experience abroad. But at the age of 23, I decided to do my MA in linguistics in New, New York, the United States. And afterwards, I moved to Canada for my PhD. And since 2015, I have been based in London, working as a professor. As you can tell from my English, I speak, I do speak, use English uh, with a Japanese accent. Therefore, I am really interested in any phenomena related to foreign accents. And my research topic is the uh, uh, second language education and teaching. More specifically, my work is concerned with the, uh, how can we improve second language proficiency in the best possible way? And if you know a little bit more about my research, I have my one website, Facebook as, and Twitter. So let me talk a little bit more about the academic discipline that I belong to. That's a second language acquisition, so-called SLA. SLA has a three main areas. Number one, uh, second language grammar. Number two, second language vocabulary. Number three, second language speech. And my specialty lies in second language speech. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the uh, second language speech research, again, focusing on my own projects. And there are three main subjects that I want to focus on. Number one, what is second language speech? And number two, okay, how to teach, what to teach? And number three, uh, how to teach? So let's begin with the, uh, what is a second language speech? So let me give you some quick uh, synthesis about how researchers have been measuring second language speech. And there's a consensus that's that researchers try to simulate what speakers and listeners typically do in a real life communi communication when it comes to the collection of second language speech samples. So first of all, they elicit second language users free speech. So how can they do that? They typically ask participants to describe a picture, a series of pictures or cartoon, or they ask participants to engage in an oral interview. And after that, this is the way how they analyze the speech samples. So they play all these speech samples in a randomized order to native speaking listeners, or sometimes non-native speaking listeners. And all they're asked, asked to do is to listen to each speech sample. Upon hearing, they're asked to make a very quick judgments. And a typical dimension that listeners are asked to assess for is a native likeness. So how native like is this speech sample? And typically on nine point scale one, uh, strongly accented, nine native like. But given that many languages, including English, have been used as a lingua franca, and particularly English, 80% uh, of the English users are actually second language users. Therefore, it's not that important to be like native like, right? Rather, what's really crucial is, is, is to become comprehensible, intelligible, and functional. Therefore, uh, the other dimension that researchers re, uh, have been recommending for is a comprehensibility. So upon hearing each sample, readers are asked to evaluate for how easy to understand. One being very difficult to understand, nine being easy to understand. I would like you to experience this a little bit. So let's give it a try. I'm going to play a speech sample that I collected from my students back in Japan. And I would like you to make a very quick judgment. And in this case, let's assess for comprehensibility. How easy to understand. Here's my student. He was a first year university student at that time, and he had never been abroad. And he was doing an IELTS interview task. The topic was quite a simple. What was your toughest challenge in your life? So please, let's listen to his speech sample and let's make a quick judgment about comprehensibility on nine point scale.
Okay, so what did you think? So let me share with you the results of the seven judges that I recruited back in Canada. All of them are native speakers of English. So judge A, three, judge B, five, judge C, D, judge D, three, four, four, four. So therefore, average score was 4.0. <clears throat> okay, so now here's a question. Uh, what does that actually mean? So his comprehensivity score was 4.0. Is his English, second language English oral proficiency, good or unsatisfactory? And if you if you you know have any opinions, why? So if it's good, why is it good or unsatisfactory? Why is it unsatisfactory? In order to answer this very basic question, I decided to do a two projects, both of which were uh, published in Applied Psycholinguistics in 2016. So in this project, I, rec I recruited 200 Japanese speakers of English. The first 100 speakers came from my own university students back in Japan. They had never been abroad. The other 100 participants came from uh, Japanese residents in Canada. So I chose them specifically because I consider them to be a, a good role model as a functional Japanese users of English. All of them had been in Canada at least one year, all the way up to 40 years. Very importantly, they were regular users of second language English. So they had to report that English was their primary language of communication. And then also another crucial point is that they came to Canada after the age of 20 years old, meaning that they all, all of them spoke in second language English with Japanese accents. But again, there are, they, they, they showed some Japanese accent, but they were all comprehensible. And all these speech samples were evaluated for comprehensibility by 10 native speech listeners of English. So here's the very quick summary of what I found. So uh, Y axis is the comprehensibility levels, the uh, higher the better. So one, uh, difficult to understand, nine, easy to understand. So the average score among the 100 Japanese university students was 4.0. <clears throat> and the, this is exactly what you heard about that speech sample from my students for so 4.0, yeah, relatively difficult to understand. But then if you compare this population against native speakers, the difference is huge because I did include 10 native speech samples as a control and all of them were rated 9.0, very easy to understand. So difference is huge. But now the picture is slightly different when we shift our attention to Japanese residents in Canada. So first of all, inexperienced Japanese residents in Canada with the emerging experience less than one year, the average was 4.2, very comparable to Japanese university students. But then uh, how about intermediate Japanese residents with the links with residents between one and 10 years, their comprehensive level was 5.7. How about most experienced Japanese residents in Canada with, the, with their immersion experience beyond 10 years, then their comprehensibility was 6.0. Now we can see that if you, if you consider these intermediate and experienced Japanese residents as a, a realistic goal, then the, the difference is just between 4.0 and 6.0. I define that transition from relatively difficult, such as 4.0, to adequately easy to understand 6.0. So my message, my pedagogical message for my students, and any students with a strong desire to achieve native like speaking skills should not be discouraged because we do know that some students are so uh, devoted to that goal. But it's very important for all students to know that what is actually expected or realistic for a functional second language user is the adequate comprehensible speech, not like a native-like speech. Now, the next question has emerged. So we, do, we now know that adult second language speech learning is, is the transition from relatively difficult to understand to adequately easy to understand, right? So let's say we have a students who are currently at four, relatively difficult to understand, and they want to become more intelligible, comprehensible functional users, such as six, relatively easy or adequately easy to understand. What kind of instruction can we provide to them? What would be the best way and most efficient way to help them reach that goal? In the next video, 
video, I'm going to talk about it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you at the next video. Bye bye.